In this video, I'm gonna show you my workflow to go from Final Cut Pro over to Apple Motion and then back again. Here in Final Cut Pro, I have a very basic timeline and I wanna send one of these shots over into Apple Motion. To get your footage over into Apple Motion, there are many different ways. One way to do it is to go ahead and select the shot that you want to bring in and push Command Shift R, which will locate your original footage inside of Finder. The main benefit of this is you're gonna have complete handles on your footage so you can make your effect as long or as short as you possibly could need it. Another great method is to go ahead and push R for the range selection tool. Go ahead and click on the specific shot you want to bring into motion. Then go up to your share menu and select export file. Go into your settings and I highly recommend that you set your export to Apple ProRes 422 or above. From there, go ahead and push next. The benefit of this method is that your footage will be trimmed down to the exact length that you need inside of motion. However, you're not gonna have any handles on your footage, so if you happen to need it to be a little bit longer, then you're gonna have an issue. Once we've located our footage inside of Finder, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we can go ahead and select Import as Project. Once we've done that, we can open up our Finder again and click and drag the clip that we want to use inside of Motion directly into this window and it will locate it for us. After that, we can select Import as Project. The main benefit of this is it's going to automatically set up your project to have the exact same settings as the footage you're importing so that you don't need to know in advance. You'll notice that my shot is way too long here at over 45 seconds. So let's go ahead and shorten this down by clicking and dragging on this down to just a little over five seconds, which is what I needed in my timeline in Final Cut Pro. From there, I can go ahead and make all of the changes that I could possibly want inside of motion. For example, let's say I want to create a chalk drawn shape around this island. Let's go ahead and select our Bezier tool, then go ahead and click and create whatever kind of shape you want around the island. After that, we can close it off, then go to the inspector and disable the fill. I want this to look more like chalk marks, so let's go up to the top and find the shape style option. Clicking on that, let's change it down to traditional and select chalk easy. So we now have this nice chalk shape. If we're not quite happy with how fluid it looks, we could go over to our geometry and drag up the roundness slider so that it looks a little bit more hand drawn. Now let's say I want to track the shot into this moving camera. To do that, we'll select the Bezier shape, we'll go to Properties and right click on the position. We'll go to Add Parameter Behavior, then select Track. Now we just need to drag in the footage that we want to track and adjust the object tracker to whatever we want to track. And in this instance, we just want that island. After that, I'm gonna change the analysis method over to point cloud. I find that works better for this particular shot and we can push analyze. This is gonna quickly go through and track the shot. Now that that's tracked, we can go ahead and animate this line being drawn in. Selecting your Bezier shape, go up to behaviors, go down to shape and select right on. After that, let's go ahead and shorten this right on parameter to be much shorter so the animation happens very quickly. So I'll select the right on shape and push O to trim it down. So now it's just a couple seconds long in duration. Now we could even spice the shot up a little bit more. Maybe we want to draw more attention to this island. To do that, select that original layer that we had, push K and that will create a clone layer. Then after that, select your Bezier shape and push Command D. This is going to duplicate that Bezier shape. Go ahead and drag that duplicated shape directly onto the clone layer. What this has done is if I disable the background, you'll see that our shape is cutting out that island really nicely. With this mask selected, let's go ahead and invert the mask and drag up the feather quite a bit. After that, we can re-enable this original background layer. Selecting that clone layer, we'll go up to filters, color, and select colorize. Then we can make this whatever color we want. We could even go back to the beginning, set the mix slider down to zero, click to add a keyframe, and then move forward in time to drag it up to 100%. So now we really have drawn attention to this specific island. And you could get as crazy as you want. You could add in different shapes. You could add in different text. It's really up to you how you want to make this shot look. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it nice and short. So let's send this back over into Final Cut Pro. To do that, go to the top right-hand corner and select Share. 
go down to export movie then in your settings make sure it's something like apple prores 422 for maximum quality if you're not super worried about quality then you could go ahead and change it over to h.264 after that we'll go ahead and push next and you'll just want to drop this into whatever folder you like and i'm just going to call this my island once apple motion is completely done exporting it you can go ahead and hide motion and locate the footage to wherever you exported it to once you've found it, go ahead and just click and drag that down into Final Cut Pro. And just like that, we have this beautiful little animation taking place in Final Cut. But what if we want to make changes to this animation we've created? Well, it's going to be important that you always save your motion projects in case you ever need to go back. And if you do, I'll go ahead and reopen up Apple Motion. In here, we could change maybe the color of this line to be a green color. You could change the background color to be red. So now it's looking a little bit like Christmas. From there, we could go on up to our share menu, select export, push next. And you'll want to make sure that the shot is exactly the same duration as the original shot. Then we can go ahead and click on that original layer so that we rename it to have the exact same name and push save. It's going to ask us if we want to replace it. Go ahead and do so. Then we can go on over into Final Cut Pro and you'll see that these changes have been applied inside of Final Cut Pro automatically for us. Now, if you don't want to go through all the difficulty of needing to export your footage or locate it inside of your finder, then I strongly recommend you check out this powerful plugin. This video is not sponsored, but it's called Xsend Motion. So I have my basic timeline. I'll go up to the share menu. Then I can go down to Xsend Motion. I'll just push next. It doesn't really matter the name. And then it will open it inside of Motion and you'll see that I have multiple tracks. So I have that text layer that I added earlier, as well as all of the footage that I had down on my timeline. So this is a super powerful companion app to have for Final Cut Pro to make your life so much easier whenever you need to send stuff over to Apple Motion. So if you're interested in that, I do have a link down below. I believe there's also a discount code. So I'll try to have that in the description as well. If you want to learn 10 powerful tips for beginners inside of Apple Motion, then I'm going to highly suggest you check out this video. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.